Welcome to ECLMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed light and we defined light as a form of energy. We also discussed the sources of light and we said we have two sources of light, that is luminous sources. These are sources which produce their own light. Then we said we have non-luminous sources and we said that luminous sources does not produce their own light, but they reflect light from the luminous sources. We moved down and discussed how light travel. We said light travels as rays and beams. And then finally, we say that this light, when it is in a uniform medium, it travels in a straight line. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss a medium in which light travel, which we call the optical medium. And then later, we will look at the experiments which we can perform to prove that light has this property which we call rectilinear propagation of light, which means that light travels in a straight line. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define an optical medium, state three categories of optical medium, and then give examples in each category in solid, liquid, and gaseous state. Then finally, I will expect you to describe how light travel in air and how light does not depend on a medium for transmission. So what is an optical medium? An optical medium is any substance through which light can pass. Any substance through which light can pass. And an optical medium can be a solid or a liquid or it can be a gas. So in this case, we mean light can pass through solids, light can pass through liquids, and light can pass through gases and remember solids liquids and gases are the three main states of matter so this optical density all materials through which light can pass can be categorized into three we have transparent optical medium translucent optical medium then finally we have opaque optical medium for transparent optical medium these ones are those which allows light to pass through them, and in this case, one can see through them. So for transparent, if you have a material here which is transparent, transparent optical medium, and you have, let's say, a glass here, if you allow four rays of light to pass to this uh, transparent material, the four rays will emerge on the other end of this transparent material. So in this case, it allows all the light which comes through it to pass through this or a transparent material. And what is important to note here is that you can see, you can see from both ends or from both points. Then now we have the second category of optical medium that is opaque object or opaque optical medium. And for opaque optical medium, these are medium in which light cannot pass through them. Light can completely not pass through them. So these materials, if you have a good example here, if you have opaque object like a stone or a brick or a steel metal, and you have it here as your opaque object. This, if you allow four rays of light to come in contact with this opaque object, this light will not pass past this opaque object. So it will be blocked by this opaque object. Then the last category in this case is translucent materials or translucent optical medium. That is number three translucent optical medium and for translucent optical medium we are going to realize that these are materials through which light passes through them 
partially and when this light is passing through them partially it gets scattered in all directions so in this case if you have a material here which is translucent and you allow four rays of light to come in contact with this translucent material this light passed this um, translucent material it will be scattered in different uh, directions so it will not go in one direction so in this case someone who is inside here if they look toward this uh, translucent material if you have an eye here which is looking into this translucent material they will be able to see so here you can see you can see from one side so if you are where light is scattered where light is small then you can see into where light is much but now if you are outside where there's more light you cannot see where there's less light inside so in this case you can only see from one point and these materials which are translucent a good example of them is frosted glass and the frosted glass is applied in toilet and bathroom windows where if you are inside you can see to the outside but someone who is outside cannot see who is inside sometimes these are frosted glass are also are applied on bank windows and bank doors and then other examples is lampshades lampshades like uh, we have the lamps that we use at home we use some lampshades to spread the light or to scatter the light in different directions and then we have some plastics which are also translucent so since we are interested with the linear propagation of light that is a property of light in which it travels in a straight line from what we have seen in solids as one of the media liquid as one of the media and gas as one of the media definitely those three media have different optical density but in this topic we will single out air so we are going to consider our medium as air and we are going to investigate how light travels in air now since hair has almost a uniform optical density then we are going to realize that this light is going to travel in a straight line in air another thing that you should note here is that as much as light is a form of energy it does not require any material medium for it to be transmitted so light can travel even without a medium and to investigate that all to prove that remember we receive rays from the sun the sun is very far away from the earth surface and this is our earth surface here this is our earth we receive those rays uh, from the sun directly to the earth surface and we almost receive them instantly when the sun is on then we receive the rays but remember the distance from the sun to the earth surface is too large several millions of kilometers now how does it reach us and remember what we have in the this is, will be our atmosphere atmosphere is where we have our air in which we are going to investigate but now above the atmosphere we have a space which we call a vacuum this vacuum it means that it's empty it's an empty space where we don't have even air then the property of this now light penetrating through the vacuum and coming to our atmosphere that proves that light does not depend on a material medium for it to be transmitted and now the fact that the earth surface and the the sun is very far away from each other and we receive those rays almost instantly then it means this light must be traveling at a very supersonic speed and we are going to realize later that light travels at about 300 million meters in one second you can imagine a distance of 300 million meter in just one second that's a very great a distance that is just like moving around the earth once a distance of 300 million meters in one second 
it means like you are moving around the earth surface once this is the earth then you move around the earth surface once it's about 300 million meters now light covers around the earth once in one second that's a very supersonic uh, speed then now what we are going to realize again how light travels is that if now you introduce in this at uh, this atmosphere you are going to introduce an opaque object in between these rays these rays will form a shadow because remember an opaque object does not uh, support light passing through it we have just looked at it as an opaque object this opaque object now this a property where light cannot penetrate through an opaque object it will be blocked therefore below this one we will not have uh, any light but we will just have the shadow of this opaque object it's a shadow now this property means that light is traveling in a straight line and it cannot make corners so entirely in this topic we are going to discuss how light will travel in air as one of our uh, transparent medium and what we are going to realize is that if you place an opaque object between the rays of light it will form a shadow and that one is a proof that light does not travel around uh, around corners and it only travels in a straight line so that will mark the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss how to investigate that indeed light travels in a straight line